Andy. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I scared you. <laughs> For real. <laughs> oh, it's just like chocolate milk. It is chocolate milk. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome to the Peach Family Homestead. We're making chocolate syrup today. <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> Thank you for the request, Suzanne Shepard. Okay, so what we're doing today with the chocolate sauce, I mean, it's kind of a frivolous thing to be doing this time of all this. Huh? My reasoning is I have a couple treats in the pantry, um, like my apples and uh, a light simple syrup, stuff like that. But when you have kids and have, mine are grown and gone and have their own babies, and I'm thinking long and hard about them, it's important to keep morale up. I'm thanking God that my grandchildren have yards to play in, all of them. Not all children are that lucky. Um, I'm not saying give them chocolate if they're not getting outside. I'm saying it's nice to keep up morale maybe once a week um, during your family movie time or maybe game board time. Make a little cake or even just your dinner rolls just to put a little glaze of uh, half water, half sugar melted and just you know wiped over top of the bun. Let it get dried. And then just take some chocolate sauce and drizzle. Just brightens up that little boredom being at home. A little treat because they can't go to the store. So I would have this if you're not interested in canning. Or if you're not interested in sharing. You can break it down into thirds. I have a lot of grandchildren. And a lot of friends with kids at home. And I'm going to gift some of this. Um, I'm What I have in here is six cups of sugar and I have it so I don't mind sharing it. I've got six cups of sugar, three cups of cocoa and what I've done is if you want a smooth ending then you got to put it in smooth. So I sifted the sugar, sifted the cocoa and I have it sitting here. You want a nice thick bottomed pan. I have a very funny feeling because I usually make it in this one. But I'm using this as my hot water bath because my other pots are like this tall. I don't want to, um, I'll just have to adjust. But this does rise up quite high. So make sure you get a nice big, this is the perfect size if you're doing maybe a half a recipe. And we'll play along and see what kind of a mess I'm going to get. So three, six cups sugar, three cups of cocoa. I sifted, I blended it together, and I'm adding three cups of water. We filter ours. I don't trust the city. And we're just gonna stir this in. Um, I'm gonna slowly bring it to a boil. Probably, well, maybe medium heat, medium high. You're gonna stir it constantly. Chocolate will burn. And just before it comes to a boil, I've got a half teaspoon of pink Himalayan salt. You can just use your own um, salt. Uh, try to stay away if you're canning. Try not to use iodized. It's not, it comes out cloudy. It's not, it's not pretty in your jars. And it, well, it's iodized. So, once this comes just about to a boil, I'll bring you back. Okay, so it's just about come to a boil. So that means all the sugar has dissolved. And look how smooth that is. It smells nummy, nummy, divine. Nummy, 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 nummy. So it's at this point I want to add my half a teaspoon of salt. It is actually important. It brings out the taste of the chocolate and the sweetness. Yin and yang. Sort of like me. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, so we got a boil. I'm going to turn it down to a medium heat at this point. We had it on medium, medium high. So now it's a medium. I'm going to set my timer. Oh, I have my jars in the oven. They're, they've been washed in uh, hot soapy water, rinsed, 
semi-dried and put on a cookie sheet um, with parchment under them um, in the oven for 15 minutes at 225 sterilizes them. Mine are going to be in there a little bit longer, but this means they're more sterilized. <laughs> so I'm going to set the timer for 10 minutes. I want to keep it on a... I'm going to let it go to a low simmer. And then I'll probably start my timer at 10 again once I reach that. It's almost there. Okay, so when the timer goes off, I'll bring you back. So we have 32 seconds left out of our 10 minutes. I didn't start the timer over. It's coming along really well. Now some say 15. I always stop at 10 and gauge by myself because this will thicken as it cools. And it's, you could just keep going and make like chocolate fudge sundae sauce. But I don't want it to be that thick. So I'm going to let it go just for the 10 minutes. I've also got here, this is an old pressure canner. Um, it still functions as a pressure canner. But why I like these, I think they're like a Presto. They're relatively cheap and they also double as a hot water bath. So if money is, you know, important, let's turn that off, then you could very easily use this to double. And inside we have a trivet that they use for um, keeping the jars off the bottom when you're pressure canning. Well, the same rules apply for a hot water bath. So that water's hot and ready. My jars have been, um, I just want to take this off the heat for a minute. My jars have been sterilizing. And my lids, I poured boiling kettle water on the lids to let them soften. <coughs> Now my amazing cousin, <laughs> Susan Anthony, gifted me these adorable little measuring spoons, little music notes, treble cloths. So I'm going to add two tablespoons of our homemade vanilla. You can find that in our DIY playlist. Look at that bubble. I know. There's alcohol in there. And it's very flammable. So you don't want to do that while it's on the heat. And then we're just going to whisk that in. <laughs> oh, I've got to wash that. I'm going to let this cool for about five minutes. I'll bring you back because guess what? It's done. And we're ready to put it in the jar and water bath it. So I'm going to water bath it for 15 minutes and I'll explain that procedure when we get to it. So I'm going to let you go. I'm going to bring the jars out, let this cool five minutes and then we're going to get hopping. Everything is ready. That looks so good. I love the texture. So creamy. Oh, it looks good, yeah. I can't venture a taste right now as much as I'm dying to. Burn your tongue right now. No up. kidding. Remember getting a hot chocolate at the hockey arena in the yeah. winter out of the machine and you take a yeah, sip of it and burn your tongue leave right your up. tongue there for half the winter? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so I'm trying to give it a one inch to half inch head space. It looks like a half inch. These are half pint sizes. And these are quarter pint. We call them testers. Oh, poop, I made a mess. <coughs> and again, we wipe the rims regardless, right? I have a little bit of apple cider vinegar. My white was downstairs and I didn't want to go. So basic, this is such a basic, basic, oh, the love clock. Basic, basic recipe. And you can half it so easily. Most homes won't need this many, but it's nice to keep on the shelf because it stays for well over like two years if you got it in good conditions. Here we go. So that one will keep out for us in the fridge, Andy. Cool. Once it's opened, you do keep it in the fridge. But I'd rather use this product than buying it regardless. I'd rather my grandchildren have it because 
doesn't have the corn syrup and a whole bunch of other garbage in it that you would get from the store. And oh God. for the cost of making all this, you're not going to get that much from a store bottle or for the equivalent either. If you put a little bit of that in milk, could you make chocolate milk? Definitely. Perfect. Definitely. That's why I'm doing it. The grandkids love it. They love their chocolate milk. Yeah, they do it though. And drizzled over ice cream. And mm -hmm. like I said, a plain, simple bread roll if you want to make it fancy for a child that, ooh, we got a snack. <laughs> Times are going to get tough. These little incentives in the pantry are important. Comfort food. It is. It's morale, right? Mm -hmm. It's morale. So you just want to make sure your tops are clean before we move on. My water is nice and... Boy, did I ever do that one. My water is nice and hot. My jars, I can hardly touch them. They're hot. My lids are warm. Probably still hot. I don't really care about this one. <coughs> So we got three, six half pints and a quarter pint out of that recipe. So you can see we're halving it. Would or, or it would be what, <coughs> one, two, three and a quarter pints. Well, three and a and a half pints because that one would. If I was to put that in there, it would equal out. But I like to have a small one too. Uh, these are awesome for ice cream and drizzled over cake and ordinary chocolate milk. Or if you're really weird, eggs. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> you did not hear that. <laughs> uh, actually, if that's how you feel, my love. No, it's okay. I, I can, know. I can make you. I was just that. <laughs> saying, that's all. <laughs> Be gross. <laughs> somebody might like chocolate eggs. <laughs> we are coming up to Easter. <laughs> you know what? This there you go. Uh, a really nice braided for Easter. A nice yeah. braided bread, <clears throat> and you put some of. Oh, I did that already. <laughs> <laughs> you put some of this drizzled over top, and then your icing sugar. Ooh, that'd be good now. Drizzled I'm over hungry. top. Oh, look, what's that? Finger tight. Look at these. Not. Oh. <laughs> mm. Oh, yeah. Oh, that wow. ring's, this is the last use for that ring. It's getting rusty. Mm. Nice chocolate. Mm. Very it good. It is good, yeah. isn't it? It tastes a lot better than the store bought. It just does. How do you explain that, right? Like, okay. How so, do you explain this? <laughs> look at that. So the water is almost, mm. look at here. Oh, I don't want to burn myself. Careful. Yeah. Uh, the water is actually at a very soft yep. boil. Okay. So you just see that? The jars okay. are hot, so they shouldn't explode on me. Jeez. We want the water to cover the jars by at least, some people say one. I always say try to go for two inches. Always. If not, I will add some more. And these little quarter ones sometimes upset me because they might float. And I'm not gonna. That looks good. So I'm going to cover it. It's already started to boil. So guess what? You don't want to seal it. <laughs> You're not pressure canning. We're just using, you know what? Better like this. Yeah. There you go. I just want to keep, you know, the heat in. It's even too much exposure. I'm going to put it back this way. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to set my timer. 15 minutes. For those of you that don't can, this is a canning session, right? Once you take those jars out, what I do is when the 15 minutes is up, I'm going to turn off the timer because it's annoying. Turn off the heat. And leave the lid a little more ajar and just let them sit for maybe three minutes or so. Then I'll take the lid fully off, remove them onto a cloth where they can sit. Where tomorrow I would take off the rings, wash the jars with soapy water, dry, label, 
two years on the shelf, people. Come on. And it's a tremendous, happy addition for any child during these times. I'll bring you back. Right, the timer went off. I'm going to turn off the heat. And I'm just going to let it sit there like that for, I don't know, three to five minutes. I'll bring you back. Alrighty. They're very hot. Do not, you'll be tempted. There's liquid on the top, there's water. Do not tip your jar. By doing so, you are tipping the hot liquid up into that rubber seal and you could be breaking a beautiful seal. So it's, although it's tempting and oh man, oh man, I have to remind myself sometimes, don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll show you a little trick if the water bothers y'all. Oh, keep them an inch apart. You want the jars to cool down. You want them to have some air between them. Don't need this anymore. Ooh, they're popping Ooh, already. Popping already. I love that sound. Oh, Ooh, oh. that one really. I don't know. That one kind of looks funny the way it's sealed. Oh, another one popped. Two years we can leave this on the shelf. I wouldn't want to eat store-bought this two years. Probably have. That's a little one. Just be right back. <laughs> Still popping. Let it absorb. You're not pressing on it. You're not compromising that seal. Myself, I probably would have left it, but I know it really bothers some people. There we go. That one's fine. It was just the water that was on there bubbled and looked weird. So there we have it. And so six half pints, one quarter pint, and this little bitty here, about a quarter pint as well for us. Look at that. And it will thicken. So it will be a little bit thicker. Drizzle that on some waffles and pancakes. There you go. Hope you enjoyed this video. Andy, do you want to lick the spoon? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> He's gone. <laughs> it's good, eh? Mm -hmm. It's awesome. It's really good. So remember to comment below. We really enjoy your comments. I want to thank Suzanne Shepard for requesting. She's a very loyal and um, friendly. I'm getting to really know her. Woo! Look at them go. Um, subscriber. And she requested this, and she's been very patient with us. She knows what's happening, and we're looking for land and homes and stuff. So sorry mm -hmm. it's been a while, and I hope that you know. Suzanne, maybe for yourself, I don't know your family situation, maybe cut the recipe in half, right? Um, easy to do, very easy. So I want everyone to remember, please comment. We love communicating with you all. Um, I love requests. You can reach us at pagefamilyhomestead at gmail.com. You can also go to our Facebook page. It's typed as page family, one word, space, homestead. And we also welcome you to come back, subscribe, and like. Thank you.